Good morning, church. Happy Easter Sunday. Uh, just a couple announcements. Um, if you are visiting with us this morning, please use the visitor's book so we have some information that we can get in touch with you and welcome you to our church. Uh, the remainder of the C's candy is on the table out in the foyer, and it is just for a donation. So don't everybody run at one time to get the candy. But if you uh, need some more Easter candy, just pick it up and just provide a donation. And then this morning, we are celebrating seven new members joining our congregation this morning. So that's wonderful. So I need your help this morning. If you would please repeat after me the following and do so with all your heart. I want to hear it as loud as possible. Are you ready? ready. Okay. Hallelujah, Christ arose. Hallelujah, Christ arose. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is Yay! <laughs> Easter is the biggest and most exciting, hope-filled, joy-inducing, life-affirming celebration of the incredible news that Jesus defeated death. We remember a love that sacrificed all, a power that conquered all, and a hope that reaches out to all. We extend a warm Easter welcome to all of you in the sanctuary and to those with us virtually. A Good Shepherd, we hold a deep love for Jesus, and today we come together to celebrate his resurrection. It will be a wonderful and inspiring time of worship. Now silence your phones and your voices as Michelle shares the prelude with us.
He is risen. He is risen Thanks be to God that we have gathered here this morning to worship together a risen Savior. Yesterday, we thought death had won. Yesterday, we thought all that was lost. Yesterday, we thought Christ was gone, but not today. Today, we know that love has won. Today, we know that hope is real. Today, we know that Christ is here. We have a reason to hope. We have a reason to sing. Alleluia. 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 He is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Join us in our opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
Please remain standing for our next song, Come People of the Risen King. Easter Good Shepherd family. So I'm wondering this Easter morning, was there much peace that first Easter morning? Surely there were plenty of strong emotions, but was peace among them? Somehow, I doubt it. 
Yet you and I have inherited the peace and the joy and the transformation that radiate through the centuries since that day. We are the beneficiaries of God's glorious and precious gift of salvation. And I offer these lyrics by George Pendergrass as an affirmation this morning. By the power of love, he arose from the grave. By the spirit of God, he continues to save. And his people are known by a natural display of his love. All our sins are forgiven. Our hope is secure. There's a reason to live forevermore. He is love. He is alive. We are alive. The peace of Christ be with you. If there's any kids out there that want to come up, they're more than welcome. I know you beat me. That was amazing. <laughs> so fast. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, awesome. I know. Isn't that one great? I figured out a, another way. Oh, that's, that's really satisfying, too. <laughs> you got to love the Orbeez. That's good. Awesome. Yeah, come on up. Yeah, you can sit in the front there. Perfect. Oh, fantastic. Oh, it's so great to see you all here. Amazing. And you guys know what today is, right? It's Easter. Absolutely. Oh. There you go. So there's a lot of things that remind us of Easter, right? Name, name some of the things that remind us of Easter. What are some of the things? Yeah, go for it. Flowers. Absolutely. Flowers. Yes. Yes, chickens, yes, little chicks. What else? Is there another animal that reminds us? Yeah, bunnies, yeah, over here. Eggs, yes. Anything else? That Easter grass stuff, for sure. And chocolate, for sure, yeah. Yes, crosses, Jesus Christ, crosses. Yeah, I heard someone say eggs, right? Oh, did you have another one? Pastel colors, definitely bringing in the spring, the, the purples, for sure. So yeah, yeah, eggs is definitely one. Well, that's actually what our message is a little bit about. So Easter, Easter eggs is for a lot of us, reminds us of Easter, right? Um, and how many of you guys have been on an Easter egg hunt before? Yeah, awesome. Well, and you're also about to be on one too. And have you ever wondered why we use an egg to represent Easter? Yeah, you get, you get chocolate from these from the Easter Bunny, right? Yeah, definitely. Now, when we're thinking about real eggs, this is a fake plastic one, but a real egg, when a mother hen sits on a real egg, what happens in a few weeks? It it, yeah, it hatches. Yeah, and a, and a chick comes out, right? Right? You're, you are so right. Lots of other animals, yes, come out of eggs too. You're right, not just chickens. You're so smart. It reminds us that an egg means new life, right? And that there's new life inside that can come out. So we celebrate Easter Sunday because that is the day that Jesus came out of the grave and he is alive. And this morning, you'll be hunting for Easter eggs that are filled with treats, but they'll soon be empty because you're going to eat them, right? And like this one is empty. I know, it's sad. But what's cool is that we actually call this a real Easter egg. Um, and you know why that is? Because it reminds us that on Easter Sunday, when Jesus' followers went to his tomb, that the tomb, like this egg, was empty. And an angel was there to tell them our memory verse for today, so you can repeat after me. Awesome. He is not here. He, is not here. he, has, risen. he has risen. 
just as he said. Just as he said. Amen. <laughs> and the grave is, is empty. Jesus isn't in there. He's alive, and because he's alive, we too can have new life in him. So after closing in prayer, like I said, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt in the playground area, and then we'll have some Sunday school activities to, to follow. So if you'd like to join, you can follow us afterward. Hold on one second. We'll, it's all right. We're going to close in prayer first, and then we'll go out, okay? You ready? Don't worry, you'll see. We're going to... You'll see the new playground, don't worry. You guys ready? We'll pray. You can repeat after me. Ready? All right. Dear Lord, Dear Lord. Today, we today we celebrate the empty grave. We thank you that Jesus is risen so that we can have new life in him. So that we can have new life in him. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So you guys want to come for the hunt? Dear friends, in the early church, having persons be baptized and profess faith for the first time on Easter weekend was a tradition. Today, we welcome seven new members to Good Shepherd United Methodist Church, five by transfer of membership and two by profession of faith. Please turn to page 33 in your hymnal, page 33, so that you can follow along, page 33. And I'm now going to call forward those who are going to be joining Good Shepherd. Katie and Robert Burdick, who come from Transfer from From the Heart Ministries, but also have a long history of United Methodism. Sherry and Jack Dennis, coming from Providence, Fort Washington, as associate members. David Marjoram, Profession of Faith. Sandy Schleep, transfer from Calvary United Methodist Church. And David Weevil, profession of faith. Brothers and sisters in Christ, to the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present each of these persons as new members. Congregation, welcome you. Turning the page. If I could have you all turn and face me as I ask you these questions. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say, I will. I will. 
to you as a congregation who stand in covenant with them? Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. David, I'm going to have you come first, and Neil, if you're able to. It is our tradition when someone comes to profess faith for the first time that we lay hands upon them. Laying on of hands in the scripture is a setting apart for the work of God in one's life. We will be doing this in a few weeks when we have confirmation students come. This is no different. This is God blessing and setting apart a life for service in God's church. Amen, church? David, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You can stand up. Okay. So how many of you didn't know that David Weevil was not a member of the church? No let alone had never professed faith, and yet he has been here in our midst. And so we celebrate this thing that God has done. Amen, church? Amen. David, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we ask you the historic questions, if you would turn back and face me again, for membership into the United Methodist Church. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. If so, say, I will. I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Would you face the congregation as they respond? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian faith. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Would you welcome these, the newest members of Good Shepherd United Methodist Church?
Good morning and happy Easter. Our scriptures today come from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel lesson. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee? that the Son of Man must be handed over to the hands of the sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all that the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the disciples. But these words seemed to be an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. And then he went home, amazed at what had happened. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God.
Amen. You may be seated. Wow, you all look wonderful today. And doesn't the church look wonderful? Yes, yes. Thank you to Linda Graham for getting all the pansies and helping me get everything beautified yesterday. What a joy it is to celebrate Easter. It seems like, I don't know about you, but I need it this year more than many years before. Anybody else feeling that way? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? Oh, holy and loving God, on this Easter morning, on this great getting up morning, Lord God, uh, we celebrate that you indeed got up and that your resurrection power is still alive in this world. Lord God, we remember on this day all those in the last year who have gone before us and who this day have joined the great cloud of witnesses and are proclaiming alongside of you that indeed you are risen. And we proclaim and give thanks, Lord God, that we too can hope. We can hope for that resurrection of our own to come. But Lord God, we can hope even on this Sunday in March in 2024 that you will resurrect us anew here and now in this place and all the places we find ourselves as a part of this worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very early in the morning, on March 27th, a bridge over the Patapsco River in Baltimore collapsed. You guys on the south side, one of you guys on the north side, hold all traffic on the key bridge. Uh, there's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. So that until you get that under control, we gotta stop all traffic. I'm in route to the south side. I'm holding traffic now. I was dragging, but we stopped prior to the bridge, so I'll have all out out of the traffic stopped. Ten four. Is there a crew working on the bridge right now? K nine one, but they have to me stop traffic on their site right now. Yeah, if we can stop traffic, just make sure no one's on the bridge right now. Uh, I'm not sure where. Uh, if there's a crew up there. You might want to notify whoever the foreman is, see if we can get them off the bridge temporarily. Ten four. Once the other unit gets here, I'll ride up on the bridge. I have all interlude traffic stopped at this time. Once you get here, I'll go grab the uh, workers on the key bridge and then stop the outer loop. C-13 dispatch. The whole bridge just fell down. Start. Start. Whoever. Everybody. The whole bridge just collapsed. Ten four. Dispatch is direct. Do we know if all traffic was stopped? I can't get to the other side, sir. The bridge is down. The key bridge, how many of you have ever ridden over that bridge? It was so much more than a bridge. It was a way for people to be connected from, to one another from one part of Baltimore to another. A bridge is by nature designed to carry people and freight from one place to another place, to join two places to foster a connection. The Francis Scott Key Bridge carried workers for nearly a half century to steel mills, to sugar refineries, to offices downtown. It could be seen in many parts of Baltimore rising above the skyline for over 47 years. But in an instant, it was gone as a container ship rammed into it even as overnight workers labored to repair potholes so that people could continue to cross it safely. In the hours that followed, I started to see something interesting emerge. Grief. Grief over a steel structure. I understood it because I had spent 13 years serving the people of Edgemere and Dundalk whose communities lie a mile from the key bridge. Many of the people that I pastored were posting pictures of the bridge along with words like, that was my bridge home and now it's gone. What they were experiencing was a loss of not just a structure, but a connection and they felt somewhat 
lost. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Joanna come to the tomb and see that the stone has been rolled away. They had gone there to anoint the body of Jesus, something they could not fully do because the Sabbath had begun. They had gone to have that remaining connection that they had to him one more time, to touch him one more time. And there, in the early morning dark, they are shattered and confused to see an empty tomb. After the events of the week, one last meal around the table, an arrest in the garden, a trial before Pilate, and a long, hard road to the cross on Golgotha, they are tired, feeling no doubt disconnected, grieving their Lord. And there before them, as light is beginning to dawn in an empty tomb, Jesus is gone, and they don't know where he is. Even as they are wrestling with their grief and their confusion over the connection to his physical body being gone, two men appear. In Matthew's telling, we read, while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them, and the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Light begins to dawn. Their grief begins to turn into hope. Matthew continues, remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to the hands of sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? And then Matthew writes these words that I love. Then they remembered his words. Then they remembered his words. It's clicking. They're understanding. They're getting it. Yes, he did say that. I'm sure at the time it was more than they could hope for to think that it could be true. They had probably filed it away in the back of their brain as something that did not make sense, did not compute. But in that moment with these two men standing in front of them and in front of an empty tomb, all of a sudden it clicks. Yes, we remember. And then we see they go to the remaining 11 disciples to tell them what they have seen. Can you imagine the disciples at this point closed up likely in a house, afraid of all that has just happened and unfolded, afraid for their own lives. And the women knock on the door and slip in and say to them, he is risen just as he said he would. <laughs> they, they, they don't respond with joy and hope right away. We read instead, but these words seem to them an idle tale and the disciples did not believe them. And we can say, well, they didn't believe the women. Maybe they never believed the women. Probably some of that was the case. But it was hard to believe. This was a difficult thing to have hope about. They knew that he was dead and buried in a tomb. They understood and knew. But there was one whom we have been following in his wandering heart through Lent, Peter, who we read got up and ran to the tomb. And I can imagine him saying, I hope what they said is true. 
And he runs, and we, we see him stooping in and looking in, and he sees the linen cloths all by themselves, but no body. And he goes home amazed at what had happened. Peter needs to make the connection for himself if he is to have hope. He has to move beyond his unbelief into hope and belief. Likewise, the disciples all will have to touch hope and experience hope. It will take seeing Jesus for themselves and touching him and eating with him to understand that indeed he is risen. They need to experience hope firsthand. And my friends, so do we. In this world where hope seems all too often denied, the message of Easter is that hope is still real. Look, look at somebody around you and say, hope is still real. And, and look at somebody else and say, hope is still real. The world tells us to be cynical, to be afraid, to have fear. Every time we, we turn on the news or look at social media or even the conversations we have with one another, so much of it is focused on the things that we are afraid of and that we cannot believe and the latest conspiracy theory about whatever it is, including a bridge in Baltimore. I can't tell you how many conspiracy theories I have seen just in the recent days. The world tells us to get caught up in that chaos. We are convinced that strong men who perpetuate abuse and violence are our only hope. And Jesus stands in direct contrast to this idea as one who laid down his life. Not a strong man who takes what he wants, even through oppression and violence, but the Son of God who knows that violence and force will never be the final answer. Someone might say amen to that. Violence and force will never be the final answer. In the words of Reverend Kate Murphy, the tragedy is that most Christians aren't interested in following Jesus on that way of peace. Many of us still believe that only force powerful enough to end violence is greater violence. <clears throat> More than 2,000 years later, we still live in a world where the powerful find ways to crucify those who they fear and despise. And to be honest, it is those ideas that have knocked down our connections like a 300-ton container ship. We are disconnected. And that is not just because of what happened four years ago with COVID, although it exposed us in very real ways. It exposed our lack of connection. Our understandings need to be transformed. Jesus' resurrection gave humanity hope of connection once and for all. That's the good news on this Easter morning. In a world where we grieve how disconnected we all feel, Jesus is our connecting love and grace, our bridge to God. We can transcend what the world has told us. We are called on this Easter morning, this great getting up morning, to get up from where we have been and to move into a new place of understanding, a place where we are connected to one another and this world. Not by a bridge of steel, but by the God who has made us all. 
the God who calls us to build connections with God and with one another. We are connected. What I do impacts you. What you do impacts somebody else. The things that we say and do and post and gossip about and decide our truth impact this world. But a new day is dawning, my friends. And if we can embrace the good news that we are, in fact, not disconnected, not alone, I believe that we can transform the world. A world who is still on a bridge to nowhere. We can have hope because we can offer them the ultimate bridge, Jesus the Christ, who died for our sake and rose again that all might have life. Connected, wonderful, hope-filled life in abundance. And so on days where it feels like everything has collapsed around us, let us remember this day. The day where Jesus overcame death. Death did not have the final word for Jesus or for us. Our pain does not have the final word. Our anger does not have the final word. The violence and oppression in this world does not have the final word. God has the final word in an empty tomb that screamed to the world, death has been overcome, swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Where, O oh, death, is your loss? But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ on this Easter morning and every morning. May we know that. And may we go to build bridges day by day to God's people who have yet to hear the good news that he is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.
be seated. So we come to our time of prayer this morning, sharing our joys and concerns, sharing our sufferings, acknowledging our frailties, and lifting our celebrations. Those are the things that make us the family of God. And sometimes our list of requests can seem overwhelming. There is just so much need for God's presence. And yet, that is exactly why we invest time in that holy practice during worship. We weave connections to each other and to God through the practice of prayer. And our weekly newsletter has a list that you can keep handy so that you can pray outside of the sanctuary. And in that spirit, I lift these additional joys and prayer requests. We have a joy that Susan Mayer's brother is getting stronger. We have a joy for Bruce Graham's birthday that was this week. A joy for Julie and Brian Morrissey's anniversary yesterday and for Bud and Lee Campbell's anniversary coming up tomorrow. Not an April Fool's joke. <laughs> and they also have an extra joy of Kelly and Brian Rowe with us from the West this morning. So, yay for Kelly. <laughs> And now prayers are requested for all those affected by the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, for wisdom, for comfort, and for safety. Prayers of comfort and safety are requested for a number of families suffering losses, the Perellas, the Campbells, the Hultings, the Gressens, and Dawson families. Sue Norris, we lift you up this morning for ongoing recovery from hand, from hand surgery and for your therapy. We lift up prayers of healing, peace, and requests for effective treatments for Claudia Sansbury, Ken McDade, Nancy McGuire, Katie Burdick, Susan DeHetri's sister Rebecca, Joe Handley's sister Alice Ann, and ongoing healing for Brenda Stanford's son. We ask that you be in prayer this week for our teachers, staff, and students as they're coming back from break and especially for our School of the Week, Mary B. Neal Elementary. We lift up nations at war and government leaders everywhere, and the United Methodist Church in all houses of worship. And now, take a moment to add your personal prayers in your seat. You're welcome to come to the altar or light a candle, and then we will continue with the Cares Chorus.
These words from George Pendergrass serve as a beautiful prayer. Please add your prayer to mine. Holy God, we recognize that every baby born, every tree that buds, every seed that sprouts is proof of our need for resurrection. We believe that your spirit stirred within the cold body of our crucified Lord, giving us certainty that the spirit of life could conquer the death in our own hearts and in our broken, dying world. We believe that Jesus walked out of the tomb victor over decay, and because he lives, we are certain that his life is in us and will conquer our own dying spirit. Living Lord, replace our despair with hope. Give us courage where there was fear. Give us the certainty it takes to train our children and the love it takes to conquer hatred, pessimism, and distrust. Anoint us for your work in our world and provide the wisdom, energy, and resources we need to be your witnesses. And now we join our voices and pray together the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's time to bring our offerings to the Lord. You may place your gift in the basket outside the sanctuary, mail it to the church, or participate online. Our March special offering has been Youth Missions. We thank all of you who have contributed and have richly blessed and supported this mission. Without you and your support, the operation of our church, our many missions, and our community outreach would not be possible. Let us pray. Faithful Father, Thank you for giving the gift of abundant, eternal life. You have said that you are a good father who gives us good gifts. Your generosity overflows to us. Everything we have is from you. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back from the abundant blessings you have given us and continue to give us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight. And in your name we pray, amen. Please stand for the doxology and remain standing for our closing song. praise song, My Redeemer Lives. I know he rescued my soul, his blood has covered my sin, I believe.
hope. There must be hope. There must be hope. Because these precious little ones need that hope. She already has it. (laughs) We just need not to talk it out of her. Do you hear me, church? She's already dancing before the Lord. Amen. Let us go out to dance, no matter how hard the day is, no matter what falls down around us, no matter the grief or the loss or the pain, there is hope because Christ is alive in me, in you, in this world. And it's up to us to tell people and show people to live Christ before them, to dance. Now hear this benediction. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Therefore, therefore, go in the power of this risen Christ to work, live, love, and serve. For the resurrection has changed everything. You have nothing to fear. You are never alone. Sin and death will not have the final word. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us, who gave his life for us, and who now sits at God's right hand, interceding on our behalf. Go in peace, for Christ is risen. And let the people say, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. New members, if you could go to Fellowship Hall so people can greet you and welcome you, please, if you have time. Yeah. 
Yeah.